Welcome scientists, it's G. Set from Butterfly Garden. Today we're going to read a story called Coral Reefs by Jason Chin. For more than 400 million years, corals have been building reefs in the Earth's oceans. Corals may look like plants, but they are actually animals. Some are soft and sway back and forth in the water, while others, called hard corals, are rigid. Corals are made of polyps, and most have hundreds of tiny polyps on their surface. Each polyp has stinging tentacles that it can extend to catch food. The polyps of hard corals build a limestone skeleton and live in indentations or cups along its surface. When a polyp is in danger, it can retract into its cup for protection. Hard corals are able to build their skeletons because of a remarkable partnership that they have with a type of algae. The algae live inside the polyp and working together, the polyp and the algae build the coral's skeleton. There are thousands of kinds of coral and each species has a different shape and color. Some have intricate branches while others grow in mounds on the ocean floor. When a coral's polyps die, they decay, but the skeleton remains and new corals can grow on top of it. Over hundreds of years, the coral piles up and spreads across the seafloor, eventually forming a living mountain called a coral reef. Corals may be small, but they are incredible builders. Coral reefs are the largest structures built by any animal on earth. Coral reefs are home to thousands of plants and animals. There are so many species living in coral reefs that they are often called the cities of the sea. These aquatic cities grow in tropical waters around the world. They start close to the shore and extend out into the ocean. Different parts of the reef have different kinds of animals. All of these animals interact in complex web of relationships and each has its own place in the system. Many of the relationships are between predator and prey. Corals eat plankton, tiny organisms that float through the water. The polyps use their tentacles to catch the plankton so they can eat it. But corals aren't just predators, they are also prey. Coral polyps retreat into their cups for protection, but that can't stop parrotfish. Parrotfish eat the algae that live inside the coral polyps. They use their special beaks to break through coral skeletons and gobble up the polyps inside. The chain doesn't stop there. Parrotfish are preyed on by larger fish, like bloopers and sharks. A series of species that eat each other, like the coral, parrotfish and sharks, is called a food chain. There are many different food chains on the reef and all together they make up the food web. We are going to take a look at some of those food chains at the end of the story. Many species use the reef for protection. As the coral grows, it creates many cracks and crevices in the reef that make perfect hiding places for small fish. Squirrel fish use the reef for protection when predators, like the Nassau grouper, are on the prowl. In addition to evading predators, each species must also find food to survive. Moray eels have slender bodies that are perfectly adapted for navigating the narrow nooks and crannies of the reef. Hiding fish may be safe from groupers, but they still have to watch out for hungry morays. The sandy area between the reef and the shore is called the lagoon, and it is covered by beds of seagrass. The lagoon plays an important role in keeping the reef healthy. Pufferfish and seahorses are common in the lagoon. Many young fish take shelter in the seagrass before growing up and moving on to the reef. Rays visit the lagoon to hunt for shrimp and snails, and sea turtles eat the seagrass itself. Beyond the lagoon, corals start to appear, marking the beginning of the reef. Groups of fish, called schools, can be found swimming over the reef. Fish swim in schools for protection, and sometimes different species, such as white grunts or corkfish, will swim together to make an even bigger group. 
By working together, schooling fish have a better chance at survival. Many species have developed unusual adaptations that help them survive. The scorpion fish barely resembles a fish as it sits on the seafloor waiting to ambush its prey. Predators better watch out too. On its back are spines filled with painful venom and effective defense. The frogfish goes fishing for its dinner. It changes color to blend with its surroundings and dangles a special fin in front of its mouth to lure its prey close. When an unsuspecting fish takes the bait, the frogfish attacks and it rarely misses. The frogfish is one of the quickest fish in the ocean. The common octopus has a few uncommon adaptations. It can change the color and texture of its skin to blend in with any environment. Being a master of disguise is perfect for hunting and hiding. If a predator does happen to find it, the octopus has a backup plan. It releases a cloud of ink that confuses its enemy. The scorpion fish, the frogfish, and the octopus are just a few of the many reef species with unique adaptations that aid in their survival. Sometimes different species work together to help each other survive. Many large predators like tiger groupers have a partnership with tiny fish called neon gobies. The groupers visit the gobies for a cleaning. The gobies swim all over their customers picking parasites and dead skin off their scales, gills, and fins. The groupers even let the gobies swim inside their mouths to clean their teeth. This arrangement works out well for everyone. The gobies get a free meal and the groupers get a cleaning. At the end of the reef, the coral drops off dramatically into the depths. This is the reef wall and beyond it is the open ocean. The tropical waters boarding reefs have very little life in them, making food scarce. Coral reefs, on the other hand, are like oases in the desert. They are teeming with life and provide feeding grounds for visitors. The largest fish in the world, the whale shark, visits the Belize Barrier Reef every spring to feed on the microscopic eggs of spawning reef fish. More than 4,000 kinds of fish and thousands of other species have been discovered in coral reefs, more than any other part of the ocean. But that's not all. Scientists believe that reefs are home to millions of species that haven't been discovered yet. Remarkably, this enormous quantity of life is squeezed into just a fraction of the ocean. Coral reefs may be big, but they cover less than half a percent of the total ocean floor. With so many species living in such a small space, it's no wonder coral reefs are called cities of the sea. Like all cities, Reefs are busy places, and they are full of thousands of different relationships. Many of these relationships are between predator and prey, while others are partnerships that benefit everyone. All of these relationships make coral reefs some of the most complex ecosystems in the world. Each species has its place in the system, and all of them depend on the reef builders for their home. The corals. Are you ready to see some food chains in action? Let's take a look. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about food chains. Do you remember what all living things need to stay alive? That's right, they need sunlight, air, water, and food. Food gives plants and animals nutrients and energy. Plants can make their own food, but animals cannot. They must eat other living things in order to get food energy. When animals eat other living things, a food chain is created. Plants are always the primary producers in a food chain. We call them primary producers because primary means first and produce means to make. The second level of the food chain is made up of herbivores or animals that eat plants. So herbivores are the primary consumers they are the first living things in a food chain that must consume or eat food. The third level of a food chain is made up of carnivores. Can you guess what carnivores eat? That's right, you guessed it, they eat meat. 
and they are called secondary consumers because they are the second group of living things in a food chain that must eat food. If you look at this energy pyramid, you'll see that it's wide at the bottom. The first level of the pyramid is wide to show that there are many plants. It takes many plants to make food energy. The second level is narrower because there are fewer herbivores than there are plants because each one must eat many plants to survive. At the top of the energy pyramid are the carnivores, and this is the narrowest part of the pyramid because there are fewer carnivores. Each carnivore must eat many herbivores to get the food energy it needs to survive. Now, I have some coral reef friends here that I'm going to use to show you some food chains found in the coral reef. First, we have some coral. And our butterfly fish eats the algae that's inside the coral. Now, butterfly fish are really interesting. They have these spots. Any guesses why they would have these spots? Well, predators that try to eat butterfly fish think that these are the eyes of the fish. And so as they're coming in, to eat the fish back here, it gives the butterfly fish a chance to see a predator coming and to move away. So they like to eat the algae that's inside the coral. And then eels eat the butterfly fish. So that's one example of a food chain. Another example, um, there's algae and also little shrimp that live in the coral reef and clams like to eat that algae or the little shrimp and then octopus come over and eat the clam and then the moray eel comes back and will eat the octopus. Moray eel have special jaws that open up really wide so they can eat bigger animals. I have one more example of a food chain that you might find in the coral reef. Are you ready? So remember, we have our algae or plankton. Our food chain always starts with plants, right? And then the seahorse comes over. Now the seahorse is really interesting too because it does not have any teeth, and it does not have a stomach. It just sucks the algae and the plankton. And then a crab will eat the seahorse. And then the octopus comes over and eats the crab. And then the red grouper will come and eat the octopus. So that's another example of a very long food chain now. Are you ready to make your own food chain at home? Included in your packet are little animal cutouts that you can use cups to tape them on and uh, make your own little game. So let's start with our kelp. And the sea jelly comes over and gobbles up that kelp. And then the sea turtle comes over and eats the sea jelly. And then the big shark comes over and eats the turtle. If you'd like to join our learning community and get the extra packets with the cutouts for our coral reef and all the other activities that we do um, here on YouTube, please be sure to reach out to me in the comments or on Instagram, and I'd be happy to, to give you more information about how to join our learning community at home. Thank you so much for joining us. Please support us by liking and subscribing our, to our channel. Thank you.